You know what's great? Thai food. It's become one of the most common ethnic cuisines in countries like the United States. But why Thai food in particular? I mean, countries like China, Mexico, and Italy all have long histories of immigration to the United States. But the Thai American population is only about 300,000, compared to over 15 million Americans of Italian ancestry. And it's not just because Thailand's food tastes so good. It also has to do with programs taken by the Thai government to increase the number of Thai restaurants worldwide. So why would a country's governments be so motivated to do that? Different cultures have numerous unique properties. Language, fashion, philosophy, religion, customs, architecture, and many more. But perhaps one of the most important and consequential would be cuisine. Of course, since different cultures often develop in different regions with drastically different climates and thus different special ingredients, and also the prevalence of meals being a communal event, this has allowed many to make the arguments that a region's food can serve as a window to learn more about its culture. Thus, with foreign restaurants becoming more common all around the world, a culture's cuisine has the potential to boost its country's image in the eyes of the citizenry of other countries. With that in mind, my friends, allow me to introduce you to gastro or culinary diplomacy. Diplomacy with food. Gastro diplomacy is essentially what happens when a country expands its influence not with military might or trade deals, but with their own national dishes. Thailand is probably the best example of this relatively new phenomenon, having embarked on an ambitious mission around the turn of the century to increase the number of Thai restaurants abroad, and by 2011 had done so from around 5,500 to over 10,000. It's not just Thailand, however. Many other countries have also taken hold of this interesting new practice. But why? To explain why a country might do this, Perhaps I should introduce those of you less familiar to the concept of soft power. Military power, diplomatic influence, economic power, these are all examples of regular old hard power, how a country might exert its influence overly. Soft power, meanwhile, is more about a country's popular opinion amongst other countries. So while hard power is about coercion, soft power focuses more on maintaining a good image. Culinary diplomacy falls under the umbrella of cultural diplomacy, itself a subset of public diplomacy, where a country in some way uses its own culture to influence the hearts and minds of those outside. Gastro diplomacy helps form what one could consider a country's brand image, but in a way that foreigners are more likely to be able to reach. Now, although the two terms can be used somewhat interchangeably, there is a slight difference between gastro diplomacy and culinary diplomacy. Gastro diplomacy is more what we're talking about in this video, with countries using their food to influence the opinions of foreign populaces, whereas culinary diplomacy is more between two different governments, like holding a state dinner during negotiations. If there is an example of a country that has excelled in not just gastro, but public diplomacy in recent decades, it has got to be the Republic of Korea. South Korea is another country pioneering gastro diplomacy, but their influence isn't just in how many places one can get kimchi in Berlin or Boston or Brisbane, but also in the prevalence of K-pop and K-dramas on the world screens. K-pop! Having first spread through a phenomenon dubbed the Korean Wave, or Hallyu. South Korea has also worked to increase the number of Korean restaurants worldwide, along with promoting foods aside from just kimchi as well as slightly altering various dishes to make them friendlier to foreign palates. North Korea even tried to open a few restaurants around East and Southeast Asia, although 13 of their employees took the opportunity to defect. So maybe not the greatest success in improving their image abroad? Gastro diplomacy can also allow more diplomatically challenged countries, like for instance Taiwan, to find their way onto the diplomatic stage. As well as helping boost its tourism sector, the island sort of nation of Taiwan launched a more than 25 million US dollar program to promote foods and drinks like bubble tea and oyster omelets abroad. In an effort both to boost diplomatic ties and try to distinguish itself in the minds of foreigners from the People's Republic next door. Even countries as powerful as the United States have gotten on board with the idea, as the US launched a culinary diplomacy initiative in 2012 to promote American food abroad and among other world leaders. In a way, however, this has also been kind of happening in reverse in American society for all its history. After all, when I said American food, you were probably just about to go down to the comments to say, American food? There's no such thing as American food. They just stole it from other countries because Americans suck at making their own food. And while it is true that American cuisine isn't necessarily native to the Americas, 
It is a mishmash of different foods brought over by different immigrant groups, not all of whom were always welcome in the United States at first. One example of this are Chinese Americans, who at first largely stayed together in small towns and in ghettos called Chinatowns, establishing local restaurants using essentially whatever ingredients they could get their hands on at the time, and adapting their food to local tastes, and largely catering to miners and railroad workers, with most of them having immigrated precisely for the gold rush. These restaurants essentially formed a kind of bridge between America and its Chinese immigrants, and also explains why Chinese food is so different from Chinese American food. So what does this all mean? After all, with countries seemingly going out of their way to promote their food and their entertainment in your country, it can be easy to get a little conspiratorial. I mean, it can give one the feeling that a country's restaurants are just there to influence their opinion on the countries, but if nothing more than just as a preemptive cautionary measure, don't let all this diplomacy talk keep you from your favorite ethnic restaurants. And besides, if a country is going to try to exert its influence over another country, better food and movies than guns and politics, right? Thanks as always for watching. If you found this video at least moderately enjoyable and or educational, do consider liking, sharing, supporting on Patreon, and subscribing, and this time I'll even say hitting the bell icon, to learn something new every Sunday.